Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Double RPG here, and welcome back to Double RPG's Ghouls and Games for the month of October. And to continue on with the tradition of horror, surreal, or super uh, supernatural type of video games, we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite games from the PlayStation 1 era, and that, of course, is Resident Evil 2 by yours truly. Capcom, or by that great company known as Capcom, who used to make some really awesome and stellar games back in the day. So, yes, we are going to be going through uh, Resident Evil 2's uh, campaign as Leon. We're going through the Leon A bit tonight, so hopefully that'll be a lot of fun for everybody to watch. So, let's not waste any time and uh, get started. So, yes, Resident Evil 2. Definitely one of my favorite games of all time, and... Uh, and it, it, even playing it to this day, it has aged really, really, really well. So I just hope that uh, everybody will come and watch me and we'll definitely have another fun time on our hands. But uh, anything could go south here at any moment in time. But uh, let's just hope that tonight's stream is actually a lot better than last night's stream. Because even though I was live streaming Mega Man 11, which I was hoping a lot of people would watch. But unfortunately, it did not seem to catch on really well as I'd hoped for. And, uh, Jerry, thank you for the, uh, thank you for, uh, hosting my stream there, buddy. Greatly appreciate it. And, uh, hopefully, uh, my friend 16-Bit Jeff is also, uh, you know, hosting the stream, too. Uh, I think he is, if, uh, he hasn't even announced anything, but, uh, prob yeah, probably not. But, uh, if you are, Jeff, then thank you for, uh, getting on, uh, with it ahead of time with, uh, getting me hosted. So tonight, we're going to be going through the entirety of Leon A's storyline, and we are playing the DualShock version of Resident Evil 2, and we're going to be playing it on normal. So sh share you out, and this time my channel wasn't hosting like before, so I had to manually host you. Yeah, I, I saw it there, uh, Jerry, but i like to say thank you so much for uh, manually hosting me. But anyways, Resident Evil 2. Oh man, this game is so fun. I had a lot of fun playing this when I was younger. I'd say it probably would be about maybe a good few years since I last played this. A bizarre incident occurred in the outskirts of an American suburb called Raccoon City. It was later revealed that the terrible disaster had been caused by the T virus, a mutagenic toxin created by the international enterprise Umbrella Incorporated for use in bioweapon experiments. The Raccoon City Police Department's special star team immediately began an investigation. And they don't even say anything in this part, which is a glitch in the uh, PS1 Classics version on Leon's disc. But the Umbrella Corporation... And looks like Jeff also got the hosting down. All right, so he wasn't even hosting on his end either. So thank you so much there, Fighter Cows and 16-Bit Jeff, for hosting on your guys' end. Greatly appreciate it, guys. But hopefully you'll stick around to watch me play Resident Evil 2 tonight. I hope. But if not, then uh, wish me luck, guys. So you guys are watching this game through Twitch, but for me, I'm seeing the game on the TV. And through my 4K 40-inch um, uh, Samsung HD TV or Ultra HD TV... It definitely uh, seems like that I'm looking at this game in 60 frames a second because it does have that uh, has that 120 megahertz or gigahertz refresh rate to make the uh, the motion of the everything on screen a little bit faster than normal or a little bit more smoother than normal. But uh, I can only hope. So yeah, we're seeing through the uh, opening intro bits first, but. Uh, Yes, uh, this is definitely the game that uh, put Hideki Kamiya on the map as a great uh, game designer, director, and creator, basically. Without him working on this game, we probably wouldn't have had classics like uh, Devil May Cry or even, uh, you know, Beautiful Joe or Okami or Bayonetta or The Wonderful 101. And you saw that, that you see that zombie opening up its eyes and uh, about to bite Leon, but uh, no, that, that zombie is biting the dust. Mm. 
You might be thinking, am I playing this to be excited and prepared for Resident Evil 2 Remake to come out in January? Answer is yes. But truth be told, I am very sad that we won't be hearing the likes of, uh, what's her name, Allison Court reprising her role as Claire Redfield in the remake. She did not even reprise a role for Claire in Resident Evil Revel Revelations 2, and that really upset me. But then again, I'm supposed, I suppose that it's Capcom's initiative with how they're trying to make the series a bit more realistic with its, uh, set, I mean, with its tone. And how everything is uh, raw and dark in the remake. Or in Capcom's initiative with the remake, I mean, the Resident Evil series in this day and age. Whereas the older games in the past, they relied more on camp appeal, which I actually really liked about this series growing up. Because even though there you can either enjoy horror or supernatural stuff through the camp uh, camp appeal sense or the realistic sense and for me personally i really do enjoy the camp appeal more than i do the realistic sense in this day and age oh leon and claire are getting uh getting harassed by a zombie inside the cop car there <laughs> But, uh, it got smacked on the pole for good measure. Okay. Still in one piece. Yeah, because that guy turned into a zombie all of a sudden. The one who got bitten by one at that, uh, at that gas station. So, that's not really surprising. <laughs> and for those of you guys who are not aware with my content, I livestream a variety of games. And seeing how I'm playing this game since it's uh, the month of October, I decided to, well, just kind of broaden things up a little bit and bring about uh, this variety of games that are, you know, uh, supernatural, horror, survival horror based, or just surreal. So I mainly do uh, uh, role playing games on my channel, mainly JRPGs, but, you know, there are times where I will take a break and play this instead. Okay, now before I get started, I want to actually config the uh, the control type to type C because when you uh, put it in this uh, config, you're actually going to be doing the auto aiming when you're uh, going up against zombies. So, yeah, that's definitely a good measure you guys want to be in when you're going up against the legions of the undead. Oh God, yeah. So uh, I have to say it's been quite a while since I. Played this game. Oh god, I wasn't even expecting that. But uh, yeah, um, I was trying to get through that without uh, taking any hits whatsoever. Now, if you're wondering if I'm going to get to the uh, police station without uh, picking up any items to get that key from Brad, who turned into a zombie, then uh, think again. Hope everybody can hear the game all right. Looks like it is uh, tuned down a little bit. So I did put the Elgato back in full blast, so that way you guys can hear it okay. And the reason why I pretty much like this game is because, I mean, over the original Resident Evil, uh, uh, in this form, is because this is the first game that actually manages to set a storyline for the whole entire RE universe. Whereas, uh, the, the first Resident Evil seemed like it was trying to find its ground, whereas this game, it feels a bit more established in its storyline. Ah, oh, the poor guy. Kendo. Poor Kendo. The owner of his gun shop. Now, he's become one with the undead. Or about to. Yeah, so there are four zombies inside this place. Oh, bad, 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 bad. Get off me.
Oh god. But at least I'm not, uh, I'm not limping just yet. But uh, yeah, that poor guy stopped breathing, and I'm gonna go ahead and take his shotgun with me. So yeah, I'm gonna need all the firepower I can get to get out of this place. Now, I'm not going to use the shotgun quite extensively just yet, because when going up against the zombies, when trying to get to the Raccoon City Police Department, it's really not that bad. And if you're wondering if I am looking forward to the remake in January, yes I am, since Resident Evil 2 is my favorite game in the series. But, you know, I do have my concerns, uh, specifically when it comes to the whole nature of how they're making the game go for a more realistic approach with its uh, presentation. Well, I wouldn't say presentation, but rather its whole uh, aesthetic. I mean, sure, the games are set in a realistic world, but it's like the, the whole tone of the original game. I mean, the original Resident Evil 2 in this one, I mean, and, uh, you know, the others uh, before Resident Evil 6, they were pretty much... Uh, mostly for the camp appeal. Now, there's gonna be a zombie. Oh, God. That was close. But, yeah. I'm not gonna try to use all the bullets against all the zombies as I'm gonna, as I'm gonna try to avoid my way through them if I can. As I really don't have to fight all of them to get where I need to go. Now, in terms of the timeline, this game takes place in the midsection of Resident Evil 3 storyline, if you played Resident Evil 3, and this would be at the point where Jim, I mean, not Jim, but <laughs> where Jill Valentine is already in a coma because of being infected with the T-virus, so this would be about a day after she got infected in the game's storyline. Stay down. Now I'm gonna avoid you. I'm gonna avoid you, so that way I don't get bit. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just pretty much being careful when going up, I mean, when trying to go up against the zombies here. It's not that easy. But this part is. Seeing as how I don't have to go up against every single zombie when I'm trying to get there. I think I already made my point on that already. But, um... You know, truth be told, I actually was going to try out the uh, this game. I was going to try out this game through the Nintendo 64, but uh, based on what I'm... Oh, get off me! Uh, based on the Nintendo 64 version of what I played, there seems to be a visual... There seems to be a visual glitch that happens where the uh, game will always try to uh, reset the uh, re re readjust towards the uh, aspect ratio, and that was uh, a bit uh, too complicated for my taste for it to you know justify me playing uh, this game on the uh, on the uh, Nintendo 64. So I decided we're just going to stick to the original PlayStation's roots for this one. And of course, we're playing through the PS1 classics on the PlayStation 3 from what you could just plainly see going into this game. Okay, like I said, Zombie Brad's not this way because we picked up items along the way. And he will only appear here if you're playing on normal mode. If you're playing it on easy, then you can forget about it. Uh, why aren't herbs coming out? Oh, I think it's right here. Yes. And I can only get one, but uh, I'm pretty much going to need to use that herb because I did take some bites when coming here. There it goes, that old LP curse of mine. Oh, come on. I'm trying to get a good view of the, uh, uh, of the door there, so that way you can get a good angle before we go into the Raccoon City Police Department. But I think there's a different way you have to do that, but I haven't figured it out. But anyway... We're inside the RPD building. And uh, going into the Raccoon City Police Department in the remake that's coming up next year. Oh, whose idea was it to make the place fully dark? I mean, I can understand with, you know, a place like this because of being invaded by, you know, a zombie apocalypse and all that other uh, hoopla. But it's like, come on.
Anyway, cutscene time. Must be the new guy, Leon. Sorry, but it looks like your party has been cancelled. What happened? About two months ago, there was this incident involving Zom. Poor Marvin. In a mansion located in the outskirts of and that's his name, by the way. Chris, Chris and the other stars members discovered that. Umbrella was behind every Marma Marva Bravanov or Marvin Bravanov or however they say his name. Not long after that, all this started to hang in there. Don't worry about me. Just rescue the survivors in the other rooms. Here. Take this key card. You should be able to unlock the doors in the hall with this. Now go. But go. just go. Fine. But I'm coming back for you. Just hold on. Just so you guys know, that's actually Paul Haddad who's voicing Leon in this game. He and Allison Court voiced characters in the nineties X-Men cartoon. Just a little uh FYI right there. Whereas Allison Court was the voice of Jubilee in that cartoon, one of the greatest X-Men characters who was introduced at the time. Yes, use the computer and we'll use the key card. Or the blue card key, rather. Is it a card key or a key card? Oh, jeez, make up your mind. But, <laughs> anyways, it's going to be very interesting to see how characters who appeared in this game are going to appear, or how they're going to play out in the remake that's coming up this January, like Marvin Bravanoff, for for example. I mean, you see him as, uh, you know, a guy who's weak and all that, but uh, yeah, you can actually see that he's, uh, you know, going to be uh, having a little bit of strength before... You know, helping us, I mean, before he ends up biting the dust with becoming a zombie and all that, but, you know, that's the poor life of that man, I tell you. Now, of course, there are uh, locked desks in this game, but uh, we cannot even open up the locked desks because we need to get small keys, just like exactly what Chris, oh my god, what did that, what was that that actually crawled through the window there? Oh, I know, <laughs> I know you know what it is, but, uh, yeah. Not even through the window there, so you might as well just go ahead and move forward, Leon. I don't think anything's supposed to appear out of that window when you go through it. But anyways, since we're coming this way, it seems like it's a dangerous place because there's windows open and they're broken off, and there's this policeman with his uh, head decapitated and it must have been twisted off, but at least we can get ourselves some handgun bullets right here, so that way we don't even have a problem with trying to go forward here any further. But anyway... We come over here, there's a pool of blood dripping from the top. But if we take a look up... Oh boy! It's that thing we saw outside. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the liquors! Seeing as how the hunters don't appear in this game as they did in the first and third games, I guess this was this game's variation of the hunters. Yep, that the poor jerk. But uh, yeah, he was pretty easy with the uh, handgun bullets. So, I mean, not the handgun, but the shotgun bullets. So yeah, he was a pretty easy enemy to take down, or it could be a she. We never know. And I'll go ahead and heal myself up a little bit again. But I'm trying to do my best to not take that much hit, that many hits, because I really do want to get to the end of the game uh, without um, you know just using small little herbs at a time. Walking through this hallway, and it's so dark. Uh, we could try... Well, no, I don't think it's a good idea to actually 
actually, you know what? Why don't we go ahead and grab it? Go ahead and grab uh, what's inside here, and uh, we will be safe. And of course, what's inside here are, of course, a memo. Uh, operation report, it tells about... Uh, Tells about the attack by zombies that happened on September 26th, and as well, uh... You know, and just seems like things are not really added up. But of course, they're telling us about certain things, about, like, the uh, operation locks and that kind of thing, as well as the enemy that they call the liquor, which we went up against. So yeah, there is some stuff to be had with what's going on inside, you know, throughout this whole game. If we come to this corner over here, come over here, we got some more handgun bullets. We will gladly take those. But uh, sometimes you'll get shotgun bullets there, but I think that's through the uh, Leon B scenario. Now, if we come to this fireplace, we use the uh, lighter here. Take a look above the picture. There is a jewel that was hiding behind that picture. So we burned off a little bit of the picture, and now that jewel is ours. And we'll take that red jewel. And we'll be using that for a puzzle coming up. So yeah, this is pretty much like the, the police meeting room. I mean, the meeting room for the police. But seeing as there are no cops inside this building, instead they become undead. We're the only one that's, al that's left alive in this place. Ugh, poor Leon. Yeah, so we went ahead and bypassed you, so that way we don't... Oh, the zombie noises. Poor zombies. Oh, there you are! I thought you were... I thought you were still limp. Oh, well, I had to waste a clip. There we go. Now we got him down. Alright, so... All the zombies are taken care of in here. Yep, they're all taken care of. And, uh... Well, I guess we'll go ahead and we'll stock up on some herbs and start combining them. Well, there might be some red ones. I'm not sure yet. But if there are some red ones, we will combine those with the green ones. Because a red herb with a, uh... Green herb, it's a... The red herb is pretty much a multiplication herb. And if you have a green herb, then that will... The healing effects will multiply by three. And with the multiplication, you're pretty much like healing yourself with a... Uh, with three herbs in one. The music in this game is just really spectacular. Just that... That ambient, uh, those ambient piano tunes, they really do set the atmosphere with just how dark and how tragic that everything has become uh, within Raccoon City. How the city's been uh, corrupted by the Umbrella Corporation, and you're basically inside of a nightmare in that sense. Especially when you're in the safe place areas or the safe zones, is that music when it starts playing, it really does encapsulate the atmosphere with how, you know, how horrifying everything within Raccoon City really is. Now, of course, if you played Resident Evil uh, Three Nemesis, you can uh, return back to the to the RPD building as Jill Valentine. Oh, ow, why am I not? Okay, here we go. If you return back as Jill Valentine, you will actually notice that when you go up and down stairs, that uh, you can automatically just go down them. You don't even have to push a button or anything to where you can walk up and down those stairs again. Okay, so we want both statues facing the main statue, and there's something that the main statue is holding that's uh, lighting up. And that's why we want to align these statues... And we can actually uh, get what's off of that statue's hand, the middle statue's hand. Walk. Get walking. Well, your name's not Christopher Walking. 
Okay. Huh, I aligned that just perfectly. Am I good or what? But anyway, these two jewels are going to be used for a puzzle coming up. So we'll go ahead and we'll take these. And we'll continue onward. We'll go inside this door. Now we're going to be inside this hallway right before the stars, the the office of uh, the stars members, both Bravo and Alpha Team members. Yes, make me waste clips, you freaking things. Man, those... Those coppers really take a lot of damage. Or they take a lot of hits for them to go down. Okay, so there's not one this way. But we can't open that door that's in that direction, so we're gonna need to go in here, because this is the star's office, where uh, characters like Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, Barry Burton, Rebecca Chambers, uh... Albert Wesker, this is where they all uh, came in. Or, I wouldn't say came in, but this is war more so where their office is. And there's another shotgun right there in case if you run low on the other one, which I really don't know why they you would need to place an extra shotgun since we got the one at Kendo's Gun Shop. But there is also a first aid spray right here in case if you need to get uh, first aid spray. So I'm going to say no right now since we're already okay in terms of our health. But I may come back here in case if I'm, you know, uh, in case if I need to actually get some more first aid spray or whatnot. So yeah, this is the desk of, right there, of Albert Wesker, the main antagonist of most of the Resident Evil games uh, until Resident Evil 5 when he met his timely demise. But if you search that desk about 50 times, you will actually get an item out of it. And here I'm, you know, continuously pressing this until we actually get the item, because if we head back downstairs with that item and we go inside that safe room, there was an area where we can develop film. And once we get this item, we can actually develop the film that's on there, and we actually get ourselves an Easter egg picture of one of the characters from Resident Evil 1. See? Right here. Film D. You've taken the film. So we got that taken. And I will show you who that character is. But anyway, here we have the desk of Chris Redfield, and the one behind him is Jill Valentine. But anyway, we take a look at Chris's diary. And he says, I talked to the chief today once again, but he refused to listen to me. I know for certain that uh, Umbrella conducted T-virus research in that mansion. Anyone infected turns into a zombie. So yes, he is relaying his uh, knowledge of the whole mansion event from the first game. And, uh, and it seems like the chief of police is really not even taking the words of the Stars Alpha team into heart because, you know, he doesn't believe what they're saying is true. But of course, there are other reports coming in about this new uh, concoction called the G-Virus that's being made that is a variation of the original T-Virus and more powerful. And, so, and that was what Barry obtained. And so, looks like all the members of STARS talked it over, and it looks like some of them are going to be making their way to Umbrella's headquarters in Europe to put an end to them once and for all. But, uh, unfortunately, Chris does not want to tell his sister about it because doing so could put her in danger, and he wishes for her forgiveness that he doesn't want her to get involved. But, unfortunately, with Resident Evil Code Veronica happening, you know how that whole game went in terms of its story. But anyway, Chris's diary has been filed. And we get ourselves the Unicorn Medal. The Unicorn Medal we can actually use downstairs. In front of that statue. The statue where that water fountain is in the main hallway. for us to stay any longer than necessary. Let's split up, look for any survivors, and get out of here. Right. One last thing. Here's a radio. 
take it. That way we can keep in touch if anything happens. And you can even talk to characters too when they're in the same room with you. I can't believe what is happening to this city. Yep. And this music sums it up pretty well. It still sums up the atmosphere of Raccoon City pretty well with how Umbrella's controlling it and how everything just seems to go down the crap hole. So, yes. It's one of the reasons why I really like the original series so much. Uh, you know, the one set in Raccoon City because the music, the atmosphere, and just the, uh, the criminal activities of Umbrella, they just really capture the spirit of what Resident Evil's all about. I mean, it's about a company who is pretty much trying to take over the world with biological experiments to turn everything into a zombie a zombie wasteland. And here you have uh, groups of people who are working together to try to thwart off uh, bioterror. And with the original games, they are pretty much inexperienced. Uh, those same characters are inexperienced from what they ended up having having to face when entering Raccoon City for the first time, or going through the different places for the first time, you know, like the Spencer State Mansion for the members of STARS, uh, both Alpha Team and Bravo Team. They're experiencing all these horrors, uh, you know, day in and day out uh, during, that whole ex during that whole time frame. Anyway, here we have the... Um, Here's the film for what I was showing you, what I was telling you before. And we actually get a, a cameo shot of Rebecca Chambers wearing an RPD basketball uniform. So just a little Easter egg right there for those of you who are wondering what that was all about. Hope everybody's having a good time tonight. I know I am. So if any of you have any questions or if you have any comments or you'd like to mention anything that you want to bring up at this time, by all means, just go ahead and type them in the comments. I'm always willing to listen what you guys have to ask me about. But probably now is not the good time because I'm going through this hallway and zombies are trying to grab me out the windows. Oh, get off, get, get off, get off, get off. Oh, God. I thought I could be able to... I thought I was able to bypass that, but uh, yeah, that's those are times when you want to hit that, hit those buttons really fast, so that way you don't get dragged out by the zombies. Because if the zombies drag you out of there, uh, drag you through that window, then you could pretty much say game over to that. <laughs> and I'm not bound to get a game over tonight. And this game is actually a a lot more simpler when it comes to its gameplay when compared to the original Resident Evil. But if you were to play it on the hardest difficulty, which normal is the hardest difficulty, which I really don't understand why there wasn't a hard difficulty for this game. Because I'm pretty sure it could have paved the way for some newer instances or like some newer things that you could actually be awarded with for completing at a higher difficulty. Which, you know, they they kind of started doing that with Resident Evil, the, the original Resident Evil, like if you beat the, you know, hard mode, under three hours, then you can get the Magnum Revolver or the Colt Python at a uh, much faster pace. I mean, with, with uh, at a much faster pace at the beginning of the game, and it would have infinite ammo. But if you beat it in under five hours, then of course you would get the rocket launcher. And if you played hard mode in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, every time when you went up against Nemesis and if you were able to kill him, then he would always drop items where you can actually collect parts for pieces of equipment and other goodies that you wouldn't normal that you would not be able to find in normal, I mean in the uh, easier difficulty settings. So I really do like that risk versus reward factor when it comes to the difficulty of certain games where they give you those incentives where they reward you with those uh, things. And you're, you know, rightfully awarded with those uh, bonuses. And with my dogs growling out there, and with there being a zombie apocalypse in this game, it really does not bode well for me with seeing how they're just being... Grr, 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 grr. I think there's a file. Yeah, patrol report. It actually is telling us about... Uh, you know, uh, some things that are going on. 
uh, going around in this station as something that uh, this uh, agent was able to recover. A small amount of C4 plastic explosives, an ex electronic detonator, 9 by 19 parabellum rounds, and infrared scope broken. So, a patrol report, basically. A lot of files to read inside that room. But, but for us to pick up, we, we only can come across one. Okay, so we got ourselves the uh, the crank right there, and that's actually a square crank, and we can actually use that in uh, at the uh, third floor of this building. Yep, the end is square shape, but we're not going to need it right now, because that's pretty much like a one-time use item at this time. But we will be coming across some other stuff later on that we can actually use uh, more than once, like the uh, the valve handle. But before we go up any further, I want to put some of my stuff away. And of course, by stuff, the items I have on me. So we go over here. And by all means, if you're going through places like these, you want to make sure that you are, you know, being very conservative with what you have and all that other hoopla, or else you're pretty much going to be boned, whichever way you look at it. Okay. Now, we're going to continue where we left off, and we're going to go upstairs. We're going to go back upstairs, and we're going to bypass the... Um, we're going to go... We're going to bypass the door, which we can't... Which we couldn't even get access to first off. But of course, we need to go back in this direction. Man, imagine if zombies were roaming around this room. I mean, I know they're roaming around in that area when you play Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, but... <laughs> boy. I can't wait to see what all uh, sca jump scares and, you know, all the types of zombies we're going to be going up against in the remake when that releases. Like I said, I'm really looking forward to the remake, but if there's something that I'm concerned about, I'm not... I mean, I'm really concerned that they're going to rely too heavily on the uh, the realistic tone instead of having some camp appeal, uh, camp appeal in place, because camp appeal, I really thought that added to the, uh, you know, nature of the whole RE ser series in general. Oh, get off me. God, I'm getting butchered by zombies over here. Yeah. May not have been the best spot for me to actually stand there fighting off these. Gosh, what's up with the biting? Jeez, creeps. And we're we're still at fine health right there. Here, I thought I was gonna have a lot of trouble going through that, but uh, not exactly. All right, very good. Combine so that way our ammo is still in full functionality and uh, We can't really grab anything off the zombie corpse And we can't even grab anything out of that soda vending machine uh, We can grab something that's out of here, but uh, the desk is locked So we need to find ourselves some more small. So we're gonna need to find some small keys in this place. I Tell you when it comes to Resident Evil, it's all about the keys disease man. Okay, we are going to go up here, and we are actually going to go around this corner here. We're not going to go through the door just yet, but we're actually going to come over here because we need to get access to this puzzle that's to the right of Leon, and to our left from what we see at that angle. But anyways, in order for us to get past this puzzle, we need to align the bookcases exactly the way they are, and since we have bookcases in this place, then that's the only way we're going to be able to actually... Uh, get through this puzzle without any problems. Okay. So what we do is we push this to uh, to the right, and we push the other to the right, and then we uh, then we complete the puzzle. It's a pretty simplistic puzzle, if you ask me. A lot of the puzzles in this game are very, very simplistic. But not to say that they're bad for being simplistic, mind you, but 
if you don't know what you're doing, then you're pretty much going to be staying here for quite a while if you don't know what to do. And there's a red, er red herb right there. I might as well go ahead and take it in case we come across a green one in a little bit. We probably will come across a green one, but it's hard to say. And now here we are at a zombie-infested hallway. And we're trying to be careful not to get bitten by these creatures. And we need to judge the distance where they're actually going to be, like there's one that's right in front of us. And there is a ladder right over in that direction. And with that ladder, we can actually unlatch this, and we can actually get access as a shortcut to floor number one. So, yes, we're going to be using that shortcut quite a lot when we're here. There we go. Yeah, those zombies, they do take a lot of uh, hits, and I'm surprised we still have a lot of ammunition on our hands. I mean, I want to try to do my best to conserve ammunition, but that's probably not going to be a... That's probably not going to be in my best interest at this time. Okay, so here we have a small key. And uh, we'll actually go back and... We'll actually go back in that one room, and then we'll actually use that small key to open up that uh, desk in that one hallway before we came out here back in the uh, the main hall of the second floor. Because if we grab what's inside there, we actually get ourselves a pretty cool power-up for our handgun. And it's actually very helpful, too. And I will show you what that thing does once we get to it. And this pretty much would predate, like... Uh, like the equipment customization feature that not only that you would see in this game, I mean, in later Resident Evil games like Code Veronica and some of the other ones, but uh, this will actually increase the strength of our firepower for some of our guns, too. So go ahead and use that small key. Open this up. We get ourselves access to a boss, I mean, a box, which they are handgun parts. And uh, with the handgun parts, we can actually turn that handgun into a uh, custom handgun and it actually treats itself like a uh, like a like a like a small little uh it like a small little i guess you could say like a machine gun in a sort like a semi machine gun uh to where it only shoots three bullets per round or you can uh automatically or you can adjust it manually to where you can actually make it shoot one bullet per round so it pretty much kind of is the same feature as the assault rifle in resident evil 3 nemesis that carlos wields and it's pretty much like the uh the customizable feature of the handgun that we saw in resident evil code veronica which speaking of which i might attempt to go through the entirety of resident evil code veronica in a live stream right before this month ends but I haven't even decided that yet. But if I decide to do so, then yeah, I'll definitely have to, you know, take into account what it is that I need to do in order for me to get access to having the, uh, the, oh god, the, the golden herb to be an, an infinite amount. And there's a way that you can make an infinite herb, like an infinite green herb, in Resident Evil Code Veronica. There's going to be a zombie down this way. And of course he's going to be down this way, but he's going to be covered in fire! I mean... If a zombie's taking fire, wouldn't he be taking damage from the f from those flames? Okay, that takes care of uh, Chuckles there. Combine. 
Go ahead and get the rest of the uh, handgun and ammunition in there. But yeah. Okay, now we're going to be going inside this area. But, uh... There's a little bit of scare factor to be had in this area, too. But you shall see what I mean once we get, get to it. But, uh, I don't think we want to take care of this area just yet. So we're going to go through this door, and we're actually going to be going downstairs. Because this will actually get us access to the first floor again, and we actually get a different route going this way. And there's a green herb in this uh, vicinity right here, and we're going to combine it with a red herb, and that way we can actually make ourselves a very handy, uh, like, triple herb effect with both the red and green herb combined together. So that is definitely going to save a lot of people with, uh, with their herb situation. And there's a couple more, and I'll go ahead and I'll take one, so that way we can combine the other herb to make a triple herb uh, right at the top there. Okay. And I haven't even put the... I haven't even placed the bishop plug back? What the crap? I think I better do that, but I will take care of that once I deal with the, uh... The onslaught of madness that is within this room. Put you back on auto right now. Okay, so yeah, we're going to be dealing with some zombies in this room. Okay, got both of them. Get that one inside the room, and we're at a pretty good angle for us to attack it, too. And there's that one that's right there that's uh, waiting for us to come over to it so that way it can bite us. But we don't even have to worry about that. Come around this corner, we get something down here. We got ourselves another greener, but we don't even need it right away. But, we come over to this safe. If we come over to this safe, and uh, we had, have to enter the, the 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 digits in the correct order, which was 2236, we actually get ourselves access to uh, these handy little items. Uh, one is a pair of shotgun shells, or some shotgun shells, and the other is a map of the police station. And by getting the map of the police station, it's definitely going to make our time going through this place a lot easier. But there's still that zombie waiting for us to come across it, but we're not even going to bother trying to deal with that, because that, uh, that guy is just... Oh boy. I don't even want to deal with that crap of an enemy. Anyways. Time for us to go back in that room where the crows are hiding. And uh, we're going to try to make our way past those crows, because if we stay where those crows are, we're pretty much going to get boned. You shall see what I mean. So, let's haul butt out of this hallway, and uh, get out. Yeah, there's a lot of crows that come inside this room. So get out of there! And that music doesn't really help, too, with how, you know, just frantic it is. But anyways... We're now on the roof of the uh, Raccoon City Police Department. And there is a helicopter that went through the building and up in flames. If you play Leon B or Claire B, uh, their B scenario, you can actually see why they get damaged. Okay, go ahead and bypass all of them. You don't need to fight all those zombies. Because we're pretty weak with our uh, ammunition count. So I'm going to try to be as conservative as I possibly can uh, going forward here. And this looks like a very peculiar room where anything could happen in such a short instant. Huh. And I can't even imagine what's going to happen. 
And, my god, I wanted to grab that. But you know what? I might as well go ahead and use an herb. You know, just to get that out of the way. Anyway, try opening this door. Or try going through this door. It opens by itself. Oh yeah! Zombies were on the other side! We better turn around and get out of here! Oh, we can't let him come across us! Oh, man. About had a heart attack. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. There were zombies that were waiting for us uh, through that side there. Anyways. We're gonna need to bypass all this crap. And buy all the crap. I'm talking about the zombies who were, you know, uh, within this vicinity. Man. I'm trying my best not to get bitten by these freaks, but what can you do? And we're getting close to where we can get rid of those jewels, those red jewels that we have on us. But if we come over here, since we have ourselves the new uh, valve on us, let's go ahead and take a look at that valve handle. So I can open close the valves with this. So we're going to use that valve handle right over here because we can actually use this to get access to the water valve. And that will help us put out the flames that are on the uh, shot down chopper. Just like so. And we're going to definitely need to put them out like this because this is what's going to make it, make it possible for us to actually get over on the side where that helicopter was actually blocking that way with the flames when we were inside that room with the uh, flamed up zombie. But if we open this or go to where the... Uh, the helicopter is, we can actually get ourselves some ammunition out of that. So, a little FYI for you guys right there, in case if you were wondering uh, about that. And I do apologize if you hear the vacuum go on, there's nothing I can do about it. But anyway, it's time for us to get out of this room, again, while avoiding the crows. Huh, <sighs> crows. So many of them, so little time. But now we can actually go this way. And there won't be any zombies on the other side, because if we come this way, that way that was blocked by the wreckage of that helicopter, uh, where it was on fire, is no longer there. Now we can actually go through that door. And we actually get access to this room that seems like it's a bunch of uh, arts and crafts. But this is where we can place those red jewels at, because we actually do get something really good out of this place. Oh, and also we get ourselves another precinct key. And uh, let's check what that precinct key is all about. And this key is in the shape of a diamond. Okay. So go ahead and use the other. And if we use this jewel, then we can actually open up the statue that's in the middle of that wall there. It opens up its chest. And what's inside that chest? Let's take a look. As we switch between different camera angles, which is this game is most famous for, we get ourselves the king plug. So I guess these plugs are in relation to chest somehow. I'm not sure what variation of chest, but it's something. Okay. Okay, so we're going to put the bishop plug and the king plug inside of the chest for the time being. We'll put it in there with the shotgun as well as the square crank. And uh, the valve, uh, valve as well. We don't even need the valve at this time. Even though I'm still kind of bummed I had to use that one, that one instance of a uh, use with that... <laughs> with that uh, triple herb that I had. We're not going to go down the first floor at this time. Well, not well we are, but we're not going to take that direct. We're not going to take that way. We're going to be going back in this direction, which is where we got the uh, the bishop plug at. But we're actually going to go back the way we came. Because there is... You remember that one hallway 
that we entered that that had the door li or that had those stairs leading up to the second floor and where that female zombie was yeah well if we go to where that door is then we can actually you know go inside that room but on our way there we're actually going to be stopping by the star's office because there are a couple things we do need to pick up and uh the shotgun is one of them as well as the uh the first aid spray And there's some music playing here inside the star's office, too, as you can hear. Kind of morbid, too, when you think about it. Anyways, we needed to grab those because that shotgun is going to be our permanent weapon going forward. Because just like the shotgun, it can also be customized as well. But we won't get that customization until much later. But let me tell you, that customization is like a godsend. Because getting that customization for the, uh, for the gun, it's, I mean, for the shotgun, it's going to save you a headache when going up against some of the tougher enemies later on. Okay. Now, we're going this way, and that's the door we want to go in. Because this is where we can use the diamond key. And if we use the diamond key here, we're going to be getting access inside of this room. But what's inside the room? Zombies, of course. Why am I not surprised? Oh, nice. Nice double kill there. Oh, geez, there's two of them right there. What the crap, man? And that was... Yeah, that was my last... Oh, God. I, I was so lucky that I had that much uh, ammunition left. Oh, man. You had no idea. But we can get some more when we're... Uh, uh, when we go into the next room. And we go inside uh, right there, and then we actually can get ourselves some film. Can we open up one of these? Yes, we can. We get ourselves some shotgun ammo, too. We've got some more that w that's added into our pile. The lock has been broken and can't be opened. Huh. Sad. But we unlock this door, and now we can go inside it. Because what's inside this room, you might ask? Well... This is the room where Marvin Bravanoff it what is. And he's right inside there, where he decapitated a zombie. But if we try to approach him... Watch. Oh, yep. He has become one of the undead now. So, it's time for us to blow a cap in his behind. Yep. Just like that. <laughs> so, yeah. We just decapitated that poor man's soul. Oh, I am so sorry, Marvin, but... Uh, Unfortunately, there was no other way to save you. Well, I'm sure there was, but... <laughs> not in my book. Uh, Memo to Leon. So this is pretty much... Uh, uh, you know, this is pretty much uh, his memo for when he was supposed to arrive here. And they were planning, like, a big party for him. But, with everything, with what went on there, you can guess what happened there. Anyway, we open this door, and now we get access back to the main hall, uh, the main lobby of the RPD building. So this takes us back to this area. And we're actually gonna drop off some of the other things, too, that we collected, like the film, and, uh, the, uh, I wonder if... Yeah, we'll probably go with the diamond key. Uh, and get what we need to get out of the other area. Okay, let's go ahead and put the first aid spray in there. Because with the diamond key, we can actually finish up the area that we're on. And we can actually get access to where we need to go. But first things first. Let's go ahead and get those uh, handgun... Let's get that handgun ammunition first before we 
you know, try to attempt this hall, you know, this hallway where we're going to be fighting an infest infestation of those undead creatures. Okay, we got some handgun bullets. Uh, is there another thing of handgun bullets we can actually get out of this room? Probably not. Even though there is an herb right there that we can take. Yeah, doesn't look like we're going to get access to any more handgun bullets in this place. Because we did get the heart key. Yep, nothing. But anyway, let's take a look at that precinct key. And it says in the, it's in the shape of a heart. And uh, let's go ahead and combine this. So that way we free up some space. So yeah, as you would have guessed, we're trying to go through uh, as much of this place as possible before we take on the next area. And by next area, I'm talking about the sewers. And I know a lot of people are probably going to say, you know, you probably shouldn't go this way. But I have to. thing about the shotgun is that you can actually, you know, get zombies to separate themselves into halves. But this is a pretty good weapon to use when you're, you know, backed into a corner like that. But hey, we managed to get all of them in a one fell swoop there, so we did ourselves some pretty good justice. There's probably some more zombies that are waiting for us on the other side. And here I thought there were going to be, but unfortunately no, we pretty much got ourselves in the safe zone. Yeah, we're in the safe zone in this area for the time being. Now we're going to go this way. By going this way... Some more of the undead is going to be harassing us. Go ahead and, you know, if you have to, go ahead and blow their brains out. Yeah, just like so. Come on. Come on. Want snapshot? Well, there you go. All right, you want your picture taken? Well, there you go. <laughs> okay. There are no zombies in this direction, but, uh... There is something of great importance inside this room. Well, I wouldn't say great importance, but it is going to be helpful. We go over here, and by that important something, there's a small key right there. And now we can get access to that lock, which, uh... You know, we can, uh, you know, open up inside that room with that, the, that storage box when we first in entered inside the building, where we saw the liquor through that window, if you know what I'm talking about. But, uh, yeah, we used the diamond key here, and now we're on the other side of the interrogation room, and I think this is the room where, you know, the pol where the prisoners are being interrogated at. Yeah, because it definitely looks like an interrogation room for prisoners in this location. Anyway, grab this cord. But if we come this way and grab this, what do we got here? This is where we got the this is where we get the rook plug. By getting the rook plug and trying to make our way back, guess who's going to jump out the window? Oh, yo oh, yeah, Mr. Liquor. Oh, yeah, and he didn't even try to hit us once. But, uh, we finally got him. And there is a... There is a first aid spray in case if you need to grab that. Okay, so we're done here. Now it's time for us to go to where we need to go next. Because we pretty much cleared this way, and we don't, we don't even have to worry about the zombies coming after us, so we probably should be in good hands for the time being. But I do want to go back into that one room and actually get what's inside that locked chest. But we also put up the rook plug while we're at it. So right before we come back to that area... 
we're going to need to take a break here and uh, go grab what we need to grab. Of course, we're talking about this room. I guess this is the, uh, the waiting room for, like, guests who come to the police station. But anyway, use the small key here. We get ourselves some handgun ammunition. Okay, I was expecting there to be some shotgun ammunition, but I will gladly take that. But you probably were wondering, with that area with, with where the red herb was, uh, if or that door next to where the red herb was in that long hallway, you're probably wondering why I didn't even go to that area yet. Well, truth be told, it's locked, and we don't even have access to that area because we don't even have a key for it yet. That's where the whole uh, thing with us going into the sewers is actually going to take effect. Okay, so now we can go this way. Because if we go in this way, this is where this is where the police's main office is going to be. Actually brings us back to this location right here. And it looks very familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, since we no longer have to deal with much zombie apocalypse here anymore, aside from that one that's still waiting for us to come to it, we can actually go to this door. We can actually use the heart key there. And that's the only time you're going to need to use the heart key. This is a pretty morbid hallway to go in, too, as well. Let's look at this. You figure zombies would actually show up in this area, but there's not any. Anyway, the open close switch for the shutter. It can't be activated since the cord is cut, so we'll actually use the cord right there. Because using that, that will actually uh, close those shutters for us. And it's a good thing, too, so no zombies will actually come in through those windows. And what's right here? Ah! Voila, well, would you look at that? More shotgun shells. More of us busting a cap in those zombies' butts. Okay, we are going to go downstairs, but what we're going to do is we're going to set the handgun to manual, the custom handgun to manual. Because when we go down here, we're going to be facing off against a bunch of zombie dogs. Yeah, when you hear that dog make that yelp, that screaming yelp, that means you actually got rid of it. So much animal abuse in these Resident Evil games when you're going up against dogs. Ooh. Look at that. Okay. Oh, boy. That was close. But, yeah, we had to deal with some zombie dogs in this area, and, uh... Oh, oh, wow. I can't even get access to these, uh, autopsy room. Whoops. But I can get access to this area. And this is the generator room inside this place. So, the generator room, yeah, pretty much looks like what it is. Just a generator room. And you figure you get something out of this desk over here? Well, you can't. Looks like there that would be a good place for there to be some handgun bullets to be stationed there. But there should be some over here. But no, it, nope, it's a map of the first, uh, first floor basement of the police building. Uh, anyway, the reserve uh, power control panel. Power can be routed to the areas with insufficient power using these five switches. Using all the, using all the power may, ca may cause a short and cut the power supply. So anyway, we need to put it at 80, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to hit up, down, up, down, up. Because that's the only way we're going to be able to get through this puzzle. Or if you do up, up, down, up, down, you can do it that way too. Or down, down, up. Or up, up, down, down, up. But anyway. Power supply is okay. And that'll actually make it to where we can actually get access to that one section. But thing is, is that it looks like it's uh, 
one of those things where we're going to need to get a card key to open that. But, uh, yeah, we will get access to that place, but just not at this time. But if we come this way, we get access to the, uh, to the parking lot. The, the basement parking lot of this area. Ooh. There, there are any handgun bullets? Nope, there's not. How about over here? Nope. So just, uh, move forward. Uh-oh. Someone was shooting at us. A woman with leggings and a red dress. And who looks Chinese? So yeah, that's Ada Wong in the flesh. Prominent character in the overall franchise. If we work together, we can move this thing. Give me a hand, Ada. Okay, whatever you say, lady. I'll help you move this uh, wrecked car. So you try to put it seems like you could, you know, push that wrecked car by yourself because you actually see Leon pushing it a little bit before Ada helps out. It's like, I think Leon can do it by himself. I think he's the equivalent of Chuck Norris in the R universe. I know my friend 16-bit Jeff likes to say that Barry Burton from the first game is this uh the Resident Evil Universe's Chuck Norris, but I say he's more like uh Resident Evil Universe's Carl Winslow from Family Matters, if anything, since he's the like uh just the happy-go-lucky officer who we pretty much can... I mean, that we pretty much come to like and just appreciate him for what he is. Anyways. Come over in this direction. And uh, this, is where, this is where the cell block should be. Yep, this is where... This is the underground cell block. And go inside of the cell block, you can actually see there are, there's a green herb and a blue herb. Blue herbs, they're what will cure poison if you get poisoned by anything like spiders and all that other hoopla. Let me guess, you must be Ben, right? Get up, now! What do you want? I'm trying to sleep here. So, this is the guy named Ben that Ada was trying to find, huh? Is this the guy? Ben? You told the city officials that you knew something about what's been going on, didn't you? What did you tell them? And who the heck are you? I'm trying to find my boyfriend. His name's John. He was working for a branch office of Umbrella, based in Chicago, but he suddenly disappeared six months ago. I heard a rumor that he's here in the city. I don't know anything. And even if I did, why would I want to tell you? Sounds like a New Yorkish type. Okay, I say we leave him in there. Does anyone know where they put the key to this cell? I have it right here, officer. But I'm not about to leave this cell. Those zombies aren't the only things crawling around out there. Obviously, he's right. What is that? Like I said, I'm not leaving this cell. Whatever it is, it's deadly. Get out of here before you lead it right to me. Hey, I'm not going anywhere. I'm the only cop left alive in this building. What? Look, if you want to live, then you're going to have to leave with me. Quite the rookie. But, but do you even know how to get out of the city? There's a tunnel at the back of the building. Inside the tunnel is a manhole. Go through and it'll lead you to the sewer entrance, but it won't be easy. All right, I'm going. Okay. So Ada's going to go on ahead, and uh, we need to go in that area where we're going to 
you know, that, which is going to be our one-way ticket to get out of here. Well, I wouldn't say get out of here, but just get us to where we need to go next. But before we head off, of course, let's go ahead and grab uh, both the green herb and the blue herb, so that way we can combine those two together. And then there should be a red herb inside that area where that area on the map was being highlighted for us after Ben told us how to get out of this building. And I think I'm going to need to equip the shotgun for this. Uh, what's coming up, at least. Seems like there's a lot that's coming up pretty quickly. Even if this takes me a few hours, which, you know, normally this won't, but I will be going through the entirety of Leon's uh, A storyline. Uh, Leon A campaign, basically. Anyway, I hear dogs inside this room. Go ahead and use this while we're at it, because that will actually open up the manhole cover. There we go. And we don't even need that uh, crank anymore. Or that manhole opener. But if you try to go this way... Yeah, there's dogs right there. And if we try to go forward, guess what happens? Grab this. Yeah. <laughs> the dogs tried to kill us. But we got to them first. But anyway, we grab the red herb here. And that will actually make the mixed herb the golden herb. But it's a good thing we did that. And there's really nothing inside of this area, you know, that the dog jumped out of. But, or is there anything in this one? Just a blue herb? Oh, okay. But we already combined a blue herb. But, you know what, we could take that herb with us in case, you know, something bad happens down below when we go down the uh, ladder here. And by going down that ladder, we're not going to be greeted by a kind set of faces. Yeah, take a look at that. Spiders inside this place. All right, it's one spider. Not, not a good spot to actually get hurt by these things. So, if anything, I'm gonna combine my. Oh, there we go. I think that's the last one. I think there were only. Are there only two spiders in this place? Yeah, there were only two spiders. Okay. So, whew, I thought we were going to have to deal with uh, you know, so many spiders at once, but uh, yeah, thankfully that's not the case. Okay, now we got like one bullet inside the casing for both the shotgun and the handgun. Although they are filled up at this time. And there's another blue herb. I might as well go ahead and uh, keep them in here. While I'm at it. I already used up, uh... I already used up my, uh, red and green herb mixture. But it's okay, we'll get another one when we go back into that one area. That we need to use the key that we're about to get access to. But anyway, grab the king plug, the bishop... Not the crank, the bishop plug. And the rook plug. Because if we get all those... And we actually go inside the room that we're about to come across. Which is over here. Let's go through this door. The septic pool. That is where we're going to be using those plugs at. But this is where we want to use those plugs at. Oh, I don't even need to use it right now. Are you kidding me? I'm close to that thing. Okay, there's the king plug, and here's the bishop plug, and here's the uh, rook plug. But we are missing the knight plug, or the queen plug. One of the two. 
But anyways, that takes care of that. And let's try going back out this door and see if, what else we can do. Nothing, because Ada's right there. Ada? I don't think I've introduced myself yet. My name's Leon. I'm with the RPD. <laughs> she waves her hand and she's like, nice to meet you. It's a dead end. You think you could get upstairs through this shaft? Give me a boost. I'll go and check. Give her a lift, Leon. Don't you dare look up her dress. That turned you into a bad cop. Anyway, we get to play as Ada. And, uh... So, yeah, there are times we, where we get to play as the secondary protagonist. Anyway, get over in this area. Alright, so those are the only two times where we're going to have to fight off against anything as Ada in this area. So we pretty much took care of them uh, for what where they are and what they're doing here. But uh, anyways, go down, this, uh, go down this elevator here and we'll actually get access to one item. That's down here, which is uh, a box of shotgun shells. And Leon is the one who can carry a shotgun, so... I guess we might as well go ahead and give those to him once we uh, come back. So, basically the reason why we're over here as Ada, we actually want to come over to this area, which is right over here. And if you open the door... You can actually get... You can actually not only get a map of the sewage disposal site, but you can also go down this uh, contraption here. Because if you go down this way, you can actually get access to this uh, to these crates over here. And what we need to do is we're going to need to make a bridge out of these crates. So this is kind of like the uh, whole dormitory in Resident Evil 1 where for us to get access to that one area across from the uh, just that unexpected waterway in the basement, we had to make a bridge out of the uh, crates there. And this is exactly the same function right here as we want to make a bridge out of these crates right here so that way we can get access to the other side because if we go back up and we actually hit that switch that we passed right by, which you probably know which is this is where it's going to go. If you come over here, a lever to fill the drain and drain water, if we move that lever, we'll actually start filling up the pool here. And those crates come up along with it. And if those crates are lined up perfectly like that, we can actually make a good bridge and we just cross over through just like that. Because if we come over here, we actually get ourselves the last precinct key, the club key. So all the precinct key, uh, keys are based after the spade, the diamond, the heart, and the club, like what you would see in a deck of cards. That is actually pretty interesting. Kind of a similar concept to the whole uh, keys from the original game, where one is based on armor, a sword, a helmet, a shield, to make it represent a knight. So yeah, it's very similar to that. Very crafty, if I do say so myself. But anyway, we're done playing as Ada here. Leon, can you hear me? Ada, did you find anything? Right here. Think fast. Here's one more. We got the club key. And there's the box of shotgun ammunition right there. Hey, I can't reach the ventilation hole. 
I'm going to have to find another way around. I'll catch up with you later. Wait, where do you think you're going? Ada. <laughs> she wouldn't be able to hear you after she whipped out the door like that, Leon. Come on, man. Get your mind. <laughs> I mean, just think about what what you just did right there. Telling her to wait, but she already just went through the door. She's not gonna be able to hear you. Anyways, enough dilly dallying. It's time for us to make our way back to the precinct. Because now that we have the club key on us, we can actually get access to the remaining doors that we were not able to get across. And that club key is going to be very important to get us access to those doors. Be wary of that. We don't have to deal with dogs here anymore since they're already dead. And we're going to be going past the... Um, we're going to be going past the parking lot again, but... Fortunately enough, there are no enemies in that parking lot either. There are if you're playing as Claire B, or if you're playing uh, Claire's scenar uh, B scenario campaign. But not in this instance. But there are liquors in this room. Why did liquors have to appear inside this room all of a sudden? I may never know, but yeah, they just appeared out of nowhere since we have made it back to the precinct. And there's just only those two you have to go up against. There's not a third one. But anyway, we go inside the autopsy room, which can be used with the club key for us to get access in. Looks like we're inside the morgue now. And you can definitely tell it looks like a morgue because there's a bunch of zombies! that are lying around, that are, you know, not awake. Anyways, go ahead and grab the red card key. Mosey on out of here, since there are zombies everywhere! So if you just moseyed on out of there really fast like that, you should be able to avoid those zombies without even getting hurt. Because, once we get the red card key, we can actually go over to this door, where we can actually... You know, insert the red card key at, and that will actually give us access to the arm storage. Now, the arm storage is where we can actually get some more ammunition at, as well as a couple of other goodies. Uh, and, and a fanny pack to carry some extra items with us, as well as a, uh, as well as a submachine gun with 100% ammo. But the thing is, is that with the submachine gun, I would say just hold off on that and wait until you play the Claire B scenario to actually use that in its uh, capacity. Anyways, and you can find them inside this locker here. Yep, there's a machine gun and a side pack. So with the side pack, you can actually carry more items. So we're going to be using the side pack and we're going to actually have Leon equip that on him. So that way we can actually carry not only eight items, but ten items as Leon. But if you're playing as either Leon or Claire through their B scenarios, then they can only carry eight if you decide to carry the uh, side pack on them. But this is definitely helpful for when you're playing in the A scenario. Okay, now since we're done here, it's time for us to go back upstairs. And thank goodness there are no zombies inside this room, or else I probably would have been pretty miffed. We can use the club key here as well, because if we come through this way, we get access to what seems to be a, like, the policeman's sleeping quarters? And there's nothing inside one of the lockers, but there is something inside that one, which is a thing of shotgun shells. But if we come over here... There's a, there's a guy laying down on the floor who turns out to be a zombie, which is not, you know, very coincidental and not very scary. But yeah, that is the Watchman who's actually inside this room. So this is pretty much his resting quarters. The Watchman's resting quarters. So sad that you lived a terrible and grim fate there, Mr. Zombie. But don't worry, he can't get up. His throat and abdomen have been torn out, so he can't even... 
uh, you know, get up and try to bite you or anything like that. So he's pretty much permanently dead. So, but anyway, the item that we grabbed here is the most powerful weapon in the game, the Magnum. Well, the second most powerful weapon, or I could say the third, but uh, it's basically the Magnum Revolver, but it, it's turned itself into a Desert Eagle. But yeah, that Magnum's going to come in pretty handy once we use it against a boss of any kind. Okay. Now we want to come this way because we can now actually get access to that one area where we can actually... Is that a file we can get? No, they're just lying around the... Uh, they're just lying around the table right there. But if we go back this way, we should be able to go to that area where we can actually get access to that one room. But thankfully you don't even have to deal with the onslaught of zombies since they're already gone. But we'll go ahead and we'll get the red and green herb to be mixed together. So that way, you know, we have some more herbs on us when we move forward. And the zombies are already gone in this area, too. Seems like something you can always pick up from that rubble, but it's just there for show. Okay, now we're going to mix those two, so that way we'll get that. And if we use the club key here, that's the last door we can actually use it on, so we're going to go inside here. This is the uh, the interview room. Well, I wouldn't say interview room, but where they do, like, their uh, press conferences on TV and that jargon. Yeah, this is where they do, like, their broadcasts. You give live recordings. Hey, a first aid spray. Heck yeah, I'll take that. But anyways... We need to use the lighter here, because using the lighter, it will actually cause these things to, you know, light up. So, pretty much we want to hit faucets 12, 13, and 11. Because that will actually get us access to the item all the way across from the other side of the room, which is this gear that's been etched inside that picture. It's supposed to represent a wheel. And there's another thing of film right there. Notice how it... Should I make, should I dare make an attempt to actually try to go back over to the film room and actually develop, develop the film for those last two bits? You know what? I think I might as well go back that way and use those last two bits of film to actually develop them. So that way you can know what they are when we look at them in the files. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a quick trip over there. And it's not going to take us that long, seeing as how we can actually, um, you know, go through the the uh, the police's work area. Or the police, I mean, the work area where the police can work in on the western side. And we can actually go through that area where all the evidence is, the evidence room. And then we can get back to that area where we can actually get access to the safe room. And by going inside the safe room, we should be able to... Get access to that safe box, or that safety inbox, and then we can actually get the other film out, develop it inside that room where the photo develop room, I mean the development studio, where we can develop the photos are. And then, we can actually know what it is that we uh, uncovered in those pictures. But they should be in relation to something towards the plot. But we'll see. Well, at least I hope anyways. I know the one that we had of Rebecca Chambers was kind of interesting, but... Uh, even though it was just an Easter egg, but... Will the other pictures, they actually be mandatory for something? Maybe. Anyway, we're back inside the safe room. This will be the last time we'll be inside this safe place. And, uh, go ahead and put the, uh, first aid spray up. And, uh, go ahead and get the square crank... And, uh, go ahead and... You know what? Let's go ahead and get this. And then we'll, after we develop the film, we'll actually get that item back. Anyways. Use the film on the table here. 
And this actually is film A, and it says Code G Human Body Experiment. So this is pretty much an experiment of the G virus inside a, a secret laboratory of some type. And use this. Film B. It says pictured in front of the, uh, the uh, of the Arucas Taylor regressed into a zombie within two hours. Subject repeatedly complained about severe agitation of the epidermis in addition to feelings of nausea. This happened up to the moment he lost consciousness. Picture of R. Lambert. Oh, okay, so it's just pretty much the uh, telling the uh, diagnostics of how the zombie came to be, huh? Okay, there's nothing inside those coats. I figured there would probably be something inside those coats, but there's not. Oh, ink ribbon inside that file case. But we don't even need to save because we're not even going to save once in this game. Okay, go ahead and get the mixed herb, mix herbs back. Okay, it's time for us to make our way uh upstairs but we'll take the emergency ladder and then we'll actually go up to that area where the books are in the bookcases and then we'll go through the third floor in that particular uh spot but truth be told either we have to go up against zombies or liquors when we're on that third floor i'm not entirely i can't remember exactly but it's one of the two Imagine if playing the remake and everything was dark except for the main hallway or the main lobby. Man, I don't know how any... <laughs> it's like you're having a bunch of claustrophobia happening to you when it's all dark like that. Oh, crap! Liquors! I forgot they were up here. I think there was just only one in this area? Yes, there was just only one. I totally forgot about that liquor being right there. But if we come inside this room... We go in here... There's noise inside of this place. Guess what happened? Zombies are now coming in through the windows. But thankfully we don't even have to go through those areas. Because the only thing that we just need to worry about is finding the last plug, which I think is the night plug. And the only way we're going to get access to that night plug is we go up this way. Okay, I thought we were going up against liquors in the third floor, but apparently not. So, looks like we saved ourselves a headache. Okay, so... We're inside, I guess this is the, uh, the gear tower for, like, uh, I guess this is like the clock tower of the GCPD building. Oh, not that one. This is where we use the square crank at, by the way. Because if we do that, we'll actually get this set of, get these set of stairs to be, uh, lowered down that we can actually go up towards that area. And that, that's where we're going to be able to use the, uh, the gear at. We need to circle around this place a little bit. And uh, here's where we can actually place that gear. Because if we put the gear here, or the cog wheel, and this is a gold cog wheel. It's gold plated. It looks like a large clock cog. So yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty much the clock tower room of the GCPD building, like what I said. But since we placed the gear there, we can actually hit the switch, and this will actually... Open up this little door that's to the right of us. And that's where we'll get access to the final, uh, final item. Which is the night plug? Yes, it's the night plug. An old dust chute. Will you jump down? Oh, it's a dust chute too. Heck yeah, we'll jump down. Where's it gonna take us? First time when I experienced this, I was like, I didn't even know what to expect with us going down this dust chute. But it actually... It ends us up in the prison area. No! Ooh. Looks like it got attacked by that uh, thing it was dreading so much, huh? Ooh. 
Grim. What a grim looking creature that is. Yeah, that is pretty gruesome. But yeah, looks like Ben's in trouble. We better go see what's up. So if we run over there, see what's up, and uh, we'll actually see if he's okay. Oh, come on, Ben. Hang in there, man. Don't die on me. Even though I really don't know you. <laughs> ben! Can you still hear me? Come on, answer! Damn! I don't believe this. I almost got the story. Bitter irony. The chief of police. Co-conspirator. Get that scum. Make him pay. Hang in there, Ben. Oh. My yeah. chest. God, that's like a chest burster if I ever saw one. I'm talking about the xenomorphs from Alien. Good God, what was that? Their offspring, the uh, the face huggers that come out of the eggs, and then they latch on to human subjects to ingest their eggs into their esophagus for them to go inside their embryos. And yeah, that's when the chest bursters come about. Mail to the chief. Yep, so looks like the reason why the chief of police wouldn't even announce anything for to, um, due to what, uh, what, uh, due to what, uh, the STARS members were trying to contemplate him for, and it's because Mr. Brian Irons, Mr. Brian Irons, the chief of police, are the ones, I mean, or is the one who's actually in cahoots with Ugh, oh, in cahoots with Umbrella. It all makes sense. And it looks like he was, uh, you know, he was in contact with, uh, contact with William Birkin throughout this entire time, too. Yow. Yeah, looks like these, uh, looks like all these mail to the chief were actually from the hands of William Birkin. Wow, interesting. That's where I'll find John. Ada, wait. Hey. Do you read me, Claire? We now have access to the back of the parking lot. Got it. I'm getting out of here and heading to the sewer. Can you meet me there? I'm on my way. All right, it's time for us to get out of here and head into the sewers. It, since we're done in the GCP, or not the GCPD building, that's in Gotham City, but the RPD building. It's time for us to move forward and actually make our way towards the chemical plant. But what's going to be there? We're not sure, but we're definitely going to find out, aren't we? So, yep, we're going to make our way back towards the sewage disposal facility, and we're actually going to go back inside that one area where we were missing the where we need to insert the night plug. But something tells me we're going to have a rude awakening once we start to head inside the place. You shall see what I'm talking about. And, yeah, it's not the rude awake. I mean, when I say rude awakening... I meant it's going to be boss time, and I think it's going to be the um, the G the G virus offspring that actually came out of uh, Ben in the uh, inside the prison cell. So yeah, yep, that's the that's the offspring that came from Ben inside the uh, Raccoon City Police Department's prison. So that's the thing who we're that's the thing we're going to be fighting against. Oh boy, looks so grotesque. And it's uh, spitting out more of its offspring to, uh, you know, give us a bit of trouble. Oh, 
Oh, okay, so we're still in the we're still in the green. At least we got it. Or some more of its children that I could shoot up. There we go. That's enough of them. But uh, yeah, that's who we had to go up against. So um, looks like uh, they won't be that much of a problem now that we can move forward. But uh, yeah, that was uh, quite a grotesque boss that we ended up going up against. Uh, I can use that. I'm close to the door, you know. Anyway, that lock opens. Now we can finally go inside the sewer for real this time. Now it's just a one-way breeze to the uh, to the umbrella facility from here. What was that all about? Running off like that was reckless and stupid. Those zombies are everywhere. Not to mention that thing that got bit. I was there, Leon. I know. Look, Ada. As an officer. My job to look out for you, but we're not going to get through this alive if we don't work together, okay? All right, we'll do this your way, you know. Man, I mean, Leon's supposed to be a rookie cop, but he's <laughs> he seems to be more qualified more qualified as a professional than a rookie at this point. But if you see him in the uh, RE2 remake trailers and footage that they've shown, he actually plays out more like a rookie. He actually, you know, embodies uh, himself as a rookie a lot more than in the original game. Although I'm not really a big fan of how his face is portrayed in the remake. Seems like we can get something out of that, uh, out of that locker there, but uh, we can't. But we will take the handgun bullets. There were 30 of them inside there. So, it's a good thing that we actually got ourselves some extra ammunition. Okay, so... Now we need to... Grab the thing that's out of here. And what's in here is the valve handle. Because that valve handle is what we're going to need to use... To... <laughs> select it? Thank you. We're going to need to use that valve handle to... Uh, get past this one area. But it's time for us to go down. So intense. Not really, but uh, at least we can pretend, right? Who in the world is that? Dressed up in a lab coat and everything. <clears throat> Ooh, bad. Leon got shot. Oh, poor Leon. He lost consci consciousness due to the shock from the bullet wound. The wound does not seem to be mortal. So yeah, he's pretty much unconscious at this point. So go ahead and grab this. This is the sewer map. Now we're inside, fully inside the sewers at this point. And yeah, we're going after the sniper who shot down Leon like that. Oh boy. Whoever could she be? We're about to find out, as we're going to be telling her. Yes, I'm going up the ladder, because she went inside the ventilation shaft of that ladder. And we got to get past this area, because there's a bunch of bugs that are coming after us, and since we're in stasis mode, we can actually slip down uh, from that perpendicular angle of the... Uh, <laughs> of the you know, the ventilation shaft, while we're still, I mean, just in stasis. Ada Wong. 
I've heard that name before. Now I remember. One of the men from Chicago who came to assist the T-Virus research used his girlfriend's name as his password. Rita and John, I believe. How did you know? Who are you? Annette Birkin. My husband was the man responsible for the creation of the T-Virus. William Birkin. What? John's dead. He became one of those zombies. My condolences. And although I regret this, you will be joining him shortly. I won't let anyone take the G-Virus away from you. G-Virus? It's capable of creating the ultimate bioweapon. Its potential is even greater than that of the T-Virus. Then that must mean the creature in the police department is... Precisely, my husband, William. And it's all Umbrella's fault. None of this would have happened if they hadn't tried to steal his research away from him. So it looks like Umbrella is playing their own card and trying to cover their tracks. The lesson of the day, don't trust Umbrella fully. This way. Even if you work for them. Yep, looks like Umbrella's trying to take the credit all for themselves. William. Oh my. Hold on, darling. I'm taking care of that bullet wound first. Stay here. But William's gonna take his revenge on Umbrella, it seems. Alpha team, have you retrieved the sample yet? Affirmative. We'll be at the rendezvous point in one minute. Roger. I will admit that this F and B is actually pretty cool. Oh, one of them bit the dust. Thanks to G right here. What is this thing? Oh, William Birkin, you look monstrous in that form. Oh, Hunk, you're in a bad spot, man. Bye bye. Even though I don't think you were the one who actually got killed. You just got knocked out. So those rats were the carriers of the virus. As a result of his virus-induced transmutation, William should have lost any prior memories he had as a human by now. Even worse, every T-virus bioweapon, including William, has the ability to implant embryos into other creatures. And create offspring. No. Come well, on, you're gonna try to kill Ada just because you were telling her the truth about something, but, uh. Yeah, you can't even hurt that woman. So much mystery about her. She does not go down easily. Okay. Time for us to go down this ladder here, because that's the next place where we want to go. Yes, yeah, go down the ladder. <clears throat> Ooh, something's inside that place. Oh no, Ada. 
She's in trouble. Ada? But looks like Leon managed to regain consciousness after all. But that bullet wound, oh man, it looks bad, bad, bad. And we can't even go up that way where the ventilation fan was because it's been activated. And if we tried to go that way where it was activated, we'd get turned into sliced ribbons. But anyway, grab the shotgun shells there and then grab the wolf metal there. Because with the wolf metal and the eagle metal, which are both in this game, we can actually use them to get access out of the uh, out of this facility. But anyways, go in this direction and watch out for the spiders too, because if we get hit by the spiders, then they're going to start spitting poison at us. Well, they won't now since we already bypassed them, but uh, sometimes they might try to chase after us by uh, ingesting out its poisonous venom at us, but uh, as long as we are moving fast and not staying in one place for too long, then we should be able to bypass them. But anyway, we need to use that valve handle here. Using that valve handle, that'll actually get us access to this section. And, well, get us access to that platform to lower it down so that way we can actually cross it. And we're going to be using it again by, uh, by doing this. And that will actually lift up the platform because we do need to go that way. Now, there's a box of shotgun shells right here. Go ahead and grab those. Because we do need to fill up our shotgun ammunition. But, if we go down in this direction, we'll actually get access to this uh, hallway into the, uh, the, the trash bin where everything is all liquidated and that kind of stuff. But, uh, we come in this direction. There's a good reason why we will actually want to be in this part of the... Uh, why we want to be in this hallway. Because... We're actually going to be going up against another boss. Who's the next boss, you might ask? It's going to be... Ada? Ada? No, it can't be you. Anyway, this lovely fellow. Yes. This alligator-infested G-virus... I mean, T-virus-infested alligator boss. But do not attempt to fight it. Just run. Because if you run this way... Use this. Hit that switch, it'll actually get that, uh, that, uh, fuel tank to come out. And, uh, by getting the big alligator to chew on it, we can actually shoot it down and watch its head explode. Like this. Like that. Because if you do that, then you can say, you can tell that T-virus infected alligator to say, Good night, goodbye, or good fight, good night. And if you're wondering if I got that reference from, uh, from, uh, Celebrity, celebrity Deathmatch, then you would be correct. Anyway, now we can go back into the dumping area, uh, basement two. Well, which is where, uh, Ada is going to be at. I know we can actually get ourselves a ink ribbon in this section, if memory serves me correctly. But we don't need to worry about that, so we'll just ride back up to where Miss Wong is. Watch a cutscene ensue. Leon. This bullet wound isn't making things any easier. Quiet, Leon. I'll get you. Aw, so lovely. Ah, uh, she patched Leon up greatly. Ah, uh, she does have a soft spot for him somehow. Although, 
She seems to have an agenda which we cannot even fully understand or comprehend. But if we go up this way... That's where we can get the Eagle Medal, right here. And there's a, uh... There's a sewage manager's diary in this section. And I'm telling you some more about, uh, you know, William Birkin and Chief Irons and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Looks like uh, a lot, lot of this uh, serious crap that's going on between a lot of these co-conspirators towards William Birkin. Anyway, this is where we can actually use this latch because that will actually get the uh, get the ventilation shafts fans to lower down, and then we can actually go through this area if we want. Might as well, because if we go into the sewers again, we're actually going to be going up against uh, zombies inside of the sewer water. The death water! As they were. But pretty much that ventilation fan just went out of control just to get rid of all those pests that were inside the uh, ventilation shaft right above the... Uh, or inside that grate right above the ventilation shaft. Anyways... Come this way. Oh, yeah. Zombies inside this room. Yeah, it's too dark to see anything inside, but, uh... Oh, God. Oh, I didn't want to pause right there. Anyways, we don't need to go up against all the zombies, so I'll just bypass them here and move forward more. Can't believe I paused right there. But, yep, there's the spiders. I'm gonna be trying to chuck its poison at us. But as long as we... As long as we enter the metals here... can actually do this. This will actually make it to where we can actually get past this part now. See if we can actually board ourselves. Yes, we can. And we don't have to get hit by the poison. But anyway, this will get us access to get out of the sewer, finally. And something is shaking right above. I wonder what that thing is shaking. That's right above us. I'm thinking it's something that's going to be constantly harassing us as we try to get to the next area. Since we are actually over here now. And you figure that there would be something over here, like a thing of shotgun ammo, but there is none. But there is a uh, little uh, control panel for the uh, tram station right here, the Sky Tram. Oh, thank you. Alright, sleep tight. Alright, uh, it's okay, I'll just let her stand right there. Anyway, sorry about that, guys. And anyways, it's time for us to ride the Sky Tram and actually go to the next area. By riding the Sky Tram, I hope it's going to be a one-way ticket for us to get over there safe and sound. Probably not. Nope. It's not. Boy, G is definitely giving us a hard time. But anyway, we hit it five times, then Ada should finish it off by shooting the hand multiple times for it to flee like that. But we wasted about five shotgun bullets fighting this creature, but uh, I'd say we did ourselves justice going this way. Go ahead and fill up our shotgun ammo again. But, uh, we're gonna equip the, uh, the, the, uh, handgun. Because with the handgun, we're gonna be going up against some zombies again, very shortly. But 
But come over here, and there's this flare launcher that's right here. Use it. You actually see an item just show up out of nowhere on the ground. We're gonna grab it. This is a weapon box key. That weapon box key is actually going to be very useful when we're going in this direct. I mean, when we're going to the Umbrella Secret Lab very, very soon. But we are heading there now. It's just a matter of getting there. You know, Ada, you can fight too, honey. Just saying. But anyway, we come over to this Chumley right here because he actually has the shotgun parts. And by combining our shotgun with the shotgun parts, we actually get the custom shotgun. And it can actually hold seven bullets, and you ought to be amazed at how powerful that weapon is. Stay down. Where you belong. But anyways, let's continue. We need to move forward a little bit more here. Because zombies are actually going to come from both sides. And I think there's one that's in this direction too, if memory serves me correctly. I think there is. Yes, there is. And it's guarding some herbs in this uh, direction. And I would grab them, but uh, we don't have enough space on us. But anyway, I think we got all the zombies that are inside of this place, so we can just go ahead and move forward now. Because there's a ladder right over here, and we'll use that to go up. And by going up the ladder... We're in the facility, just right before Umbrella Secret Laboratory. Okay, oh right. We, we don't need that valve anymore, so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of it. But we will still keep that key on us. And we got some bullet ammo and some magnet am uh, magnum ammo, which is the first time we're actually coming across magnum ammo, believe it or not. But, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll take that. But, you know what? Let's go ahead and, uh, put that weapon box- Or, that weapon storage key. Or, the weapon box key in here. That way, we'll, uh, get it when we're inside the Umbrella Laboratory. But, yeah, we're getting close to getting done with this place. Or, getting done with this game, mind you. But, uh... Yep, this looks like, definitely looks like the place where, you know, it would lead to something very suspicious, like a secret facility of some type. And there's the, uh, factory map. We'll go ahead and we'll take that. And that's the tram that we need to use to get us access into the, uh, umbrella facility. Now, if you played Resident Evil Zero, this is the exact same thing, what you'd come to expect from uh, that one instance where Rebecca was trying to find Billy after she got separated by him later on in the game. Oh, more Magnum Bullets. Good. They're giving us the Magnum Bullets like candy. And we got the control panel key because with that control panel key, that's what we're going to need to use for us to get down to where the Umbrella's secret laboratory is located.
So go ahead and use that key. And it's time for us to go down. Will I push the activation switch? Oh, you bet I will. We're going down to the Umbrella Lab. And we head back inside. And then it's time for us to take a trip downwards. As we wa will watch from this FMV is exactly what it will do. Just seems like we're still inside the city limits where this Umbrella Research Laboratory is. But truth be told, we're actually more outside of the city than ever. Because even when Rebecca, when we were playing as Rebecca in Resident Evil Zero, she was outside of Raccoon City the entire time. Ooh, bad. Crap, Ada. Oh, great. She's unconscious at this moment. Who did attack her? Security panel. In case of an emergency, the red light will turn on and access from outside will be prohibited for a limited time. Okay, so looks like we're going to be locked out for the time being. So we need to check and see what it was that was actually attack that attack data. Ooh. Yep. It's G, all right. And by G, that, yeah, that's William Birkin. As his, uh, uh, G virus form. But don't stay in one spot for too long. You want to make sure that you're not close to where G is, because he will start attacking you. Bad. God. And attack you twice. But anyway, that takes care of him. And he's down for the count. And, yeah, you can see blood coming out of him. That means we pretty much killed him, right? I would hope. But probably not, because appearances can be deceiving. But, yeah, we finally took care of that monstrosity, and now it's time for us to go downwards. Yep, we're finally in the lab now. Leon, she can't hear you, man. She's unconscious. But yep, we're inside the Umbrella Laboratory inside Raccoon City. Now we need to get Ada somewhere safe since she has already is hurt pretty badly. Inside Umbrella's secret lab. I'll go find something to treat that wound, so just rest here in the meantime. But I'll only slow you down from your injuries, so save yourself. I told you, it's my job to look after you. But you'll be in danger if you stay with me. I know I've only known you for a short period of time, but I really enjoy being with you. Capable of caring about anyone, but I don't want to lose you. We're leaving this place together. Wait here for me. I'll be right back. Man, so deep. So caring of her, too. Really makes you wish that she was a sympathetic character. But instead, we all know what she becomes later on, but uh, that's a whole other, you know... That's a whole other scenario that one does not want to go in. I'd say it's probably high time that... Well, do we really want to? 
We could, but I think we're gonna be okay for now. If anything, we probably... Well, I'd say we'll be okay with our weapons that we have on hand. Okay, so it's time for us to actually go explore this place. So yeah, big ol' dreaded, dreaded facility that we're gonna be coming across here. And I do use that term strongly because it's a dreadful place, this facility. Looks very high-tech and uh, very laboratory-ish, if that's even a word. I know it's not a word, but sometimes I like to be creative with how I say things. But let's see what's inside here. It's like a fridge. And it is a fridge. Because everything's so cool in here. But it is a fuse case that we're needing to get access to. Because with this fuse case, we can actually use that over here. Because we do need to create a fuse. And it looks like that thing can actually still move and actually give us the last fuse that we need to make the fuse case. Because we do need to light everything up and get access to the entirety of the laboratory. All right, we got our booby prize, the main fuse. And go ahead and grab this, uh... We're gonna go ahead and grab the first aid spray here too, so that way we'll take us, or take that with us. And we'll take that with us right before we hit up the final battle. Whether you play on normal or easy, the bosses here, I mean, the damage from enemies and bosses, they're pretty much the same. So, you're not really going to experience any problems whatsoever when you're going up against uh, going up against the legions of the undead. Alright, so we got that fuse placed in there, and now everything is lit up. So, this place is now activated, or active with power. Now we're going to hit the switch. By hitting the shutter, we're going to need to make our way backwards because these things are going to spew acid at us and get us poisoned. All right, and that's take care of that. That takes care of them. But the thing is that they can that they're still alive because their vines will actually attack us. But we don't want to get too close to them, if that makes any sense. Okay, laboratory security manual, and uh... hmm. Okay, just telling us some uh, handy stuff that we'll need to know somewhat. Uh, you need two item spaces to obtain this item, so basically this is where the flamethrower is going to be, but we're not going to need the flamethrower for this thing because, well, there's a bunch of vines right here, and we just need to light the arm up of, this, uh, of the oil that's right there because if we do that, this will actually make the flames go up and actually attack the vines right there. I guess you could say those vines getting burned. That is definitely vine by us, if you know what I mean. Now nah, you probably don't even know what I mean, but I know, bad pun. I can't help myself. I just want to, you know, really have fun with the games that I play. But anyway, since we burned those vines, we can actually get access to this area. Because, well, if we go inside there... Liquors. And they each take two hits each. Or they each take two hits. Get us- get me out of here. But yeah. Come in this room, we can actually get ourselves a couple boxes of shotgun shells as a bonus ammunition. It's a good thing that we did that too, so that way, you know, we can actually get access to those. 
But yeah, that's the only thing you're going to be able to find inside this room. Except for an ink ribbon. Ink ribbon, of course, but uh, you're not going to need it if you're trying to go through this game in, in its whole entirety. And I guarantee you we will beat this game before the hour is up. And besides, we're almost done with this game anyways. Would have thought those things would still be around. And just see how slow that thing is. So slow. Wait, if we go behind it. You didn't poison us, did you? Probably did. No, you did not. We are fine. Or if our name's not Apollo Justice. But, uh, yeah, we ended up becoming fine throughout the end there. But don't get anywhere near close to them, even when they're dead like that, because their tentacles will still attack you. And we're going to find some more out here in this area, but truth be told, we don't actually have to fight against them when we're inside this area. As long as you go up and down the ladder, you should be able to bypass them without even having to go up against them. So that's a good way how you can save ammunition in the, when you're in this spot. But yeah, that's a big old plant that's harvesting inside of the laboratory there, if I do say so myself. All right. Eh. Wow, that one took three hits. And they're making us waste the uh, shotgun ammunition like candy. Anyway, I'm going to heal myself real quick. With just that one herb. So yeah, you can pretty much tell there's a lot of parallels between this game and the original Resident Evil. There's a lot of it. I mean, the police station is like the Spencer State Mansion, and this is pretty similar to the laboratory that we were in in the first game. Yeah, like I said, there's a lot of similarities between uh, the original Resident Evil and this one. And that's quite an accomplishment, if you ask me. Okay, so we put one of the, uh... Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I don't want to do that just yet. Actually, I want to go back because I want to actually get that weapon storage key. Sorry about that. My dog wanted back up onto my bed, so I had to put her up there. Anyway, weapon storage key, come with me. Because when we go in this direction with where the weapon storage key can be used, we can actually use that. Uh, I think we're going to need to get the card key to get access to that area over there. But anyway, we're inside the P4 laboratory, which is where William was, uh, was badly injured by the Umbrella Corporation's uh, soldiers. But if we use the weapon key here, the weapon box key... Open this up, we get ourselves a third box. Or a second box, and these contain the magnum parts. Now we can create the custom magnum revolver. And by combining it, we get ourselves a magnum, or a desert eagle with like a scope, or like a silencer, or something like that. This is the strongest weapon in the entire game, and this is pretty much the weapon we're going to be using when we go up against the final boss. But anyway, going inside this room... We got, we got undead researchers that we need to go up against, and it's been a, quite a while since we went up against zombies. And we have some zombies in lab coats. <laughs> I, I lopped off its arm. Now you don't see that every day. that I lop off a zombie's arm when I shoot at it. 
Man, those zombies aren't going down without a fight, are, aren't they? There we go. Yeah, those those zombies that we're going up against, they're a lot tougher than the ones that we normally go up towards. But anyways. I think there's only a couple in this section. Yeah. And we can bypass the other one if we want to, because if we come over here, we get ourselves the lab card key. And that's the only thing we need inside of this place. We don't need to use this, since that's the only thing we need to use as Claire when we play as her. But yeah, that's all we need inside this place, rather. And it's time for us to get out of this room. And by getting out of this room, we can now make our way backwards. But, I actually want to take a trip in this room. Because if we take a trip in this room, there, there's larva coming from the top. And whether, where there's larva, there's bound to be a moth somewhere. That's a T-virus and... That's a T-virus infested... That's a definitely a T-virus infested moth if I ever saw one myself. <laughs> and yeah, it's basically what it is. Anyway, we need to get access to that computer, but there are these little creatures who are constantly, uh, you know, covering the uh, computer keyboard. But anyways, will you operate the computer? Yes, I will. And it's, um, this will actually get us access to that secret room, but we need to actually have two people take uh, control of it. And this is where the whole scenario A and B campaigns come in handy, because in order for us to get access to that room, we, our username has to be guest. And then we need to register our fingerprint, and then we will be able to get one step closer to getting access to that area. And the guest registration is valid for only 24 hours. So Leon has to use that once, and Claire has to use it once. And being the person in the B campaign is the only one who can actually get access to that room in the inside, and that will actually give us access to not only a bunch of liquors that we have to fight, but it will also give us access to... Um, It'll also give us access to another uh, submachine gun. Anyway, grab the uh, last first aid spray. Because we will need this. I mean, we will need it for when we're going up against the boss that's coming up. <clears throat> and there's one last boss in this game, mind you. I would like to say that's the boss coming through there, but nope, it's just a liquor that just was hiding up in the ventilation shaft. Just trying to be a jerk to us all again. Okay, remember... Okay, that one area where we're going to go back to, you remember that area that actually had that room where it was covered in ice? Yeah, we're going to be going back in that room, but there's two specific areas we're actually going to go uh, at first. But I will show you what those places are once as we get over to them. <clears throat> Thank God we don't even have to deal with those uh, mutants anymore that spew out that poisonous acid. Since we already killed them, like, twice inside that room as there were two that came through that door and then two more that spawned just automatically. All right, so we're gonna hit the switch first. And that will actually bring us to this area where there seems to be a device next to that door. If we come over to it, that's what it says. Two, two or more staff needed to be present to enter. Commencing with fingerprint verification. Will you proceed? Yes, we will, since we have our finger verifi fingerprints verified. But uh, commencing the secondary fingerprint verification. And uh, unfortunately, we can't even do that because we actually need Claire's help for that. And that's where uh, Scenario B actually comes into play for these characters. 
Anyway, we opened up this door, and uh, we ended up using the lab key for the last thing, and uh, now we no longer need it, and now we can actually go inside this room. And there's a thing for some magnum bullets sitting right there. We'll gladly take that. And uh, there's a bunch of zombie patients. Anyway, turn on the lights. Now we got the lights turned on. Yeah, they take a... I mean, that shotgun takes a lot of damage. Just like that. Yeah, that shotgun means business. But uh, yeah, this is pretty much the last area where we need to come to, because if we come over here, we get ourselves the metal optical disc. Or the MODISC, as it's called. And then we just need to make our way out of here. And go ahead and grab this, uh, grab this last first aid spray, since we are coming close to the end. But anyways, go through this door. And let's go find Ada. Or not. You murdered my husband. I know what you're looking for. You came for the key for this, didn't you? Take it from me. This is my husband's legacy. Now, where's that spy you were working with earlier? You know who I'm talking about. What? You really don't know anything, do you? <laughs> so gullible. She's one of the operatives sent here by the agency. The only reason why she came here is to obtain the key virus. That's a lie. No, it's the truth. I discovered this when I did a background check on her. She specifically got close to John and became his girlfriend to get information about him. That can't be. I know her. Ada wouldn't do something like that. If you don't want to believe it, I don't really care. You're about to die anyway. Ouch. So she tells us a major plot point about Ada. Now that's kind of a hard pill to swallow, although she may not be far from the truth. But anyway, we obtained the G-Virus sample from her. Well, time for us to get out of here because the self-destruct sequence has been activated. Yep, so it's time for us to leave this place and hopefully we can, you know, save, our, uh, save ourselves and get out of here for good. So she was right. I don't believe this. Annette was right. About everything. That's why I told you to leave without me, but you wouldn't listen. Now hand it over. Don't make me shoot you. You can't do that. Yeah, she can't because she cares about him. Ooh! Ouch, who popped a cap on her? Ada. 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 I've got you. Don't give up. Oh, God. Just 
have to help me out here. I really want to escape my arms, escape everything. I... Oh, no. Oh, God, why did Annette have to do that? Oh, that winch. Oh, sorry, Leon. No one should have it, and he threw it away. Threw it, meaning that no one should have to take it. There are no rounds in the magazine, so it looks like she wasn't intent to kill him. What made her do that? Yeah, I kind of questioned that myself, Leon, so don't worry, man. That is very questionable what she did, but it's too bad that she's already bit the dust at this point. For us to interrogate her, but it... Anyway, enough of that. It's time for us that we made it out of here and finally complete this game for good. And I'm sure a lot of you are ready for me to wrap it up for the evening. And we will as soon as we get done with this game. And God, I love this music. Zombies really that I guess they would be. They're strong and fortified. Okay, the zombies are done and now it's time for us to worry about getting out of here for good. But anyway, this is where the optical disc can actually come into play here. The label says for cargo room verification. So go ahead and use that and we'll actually go into the cargo room from this point on. But this is going to be our one-way ticket to get out of this place for good. Because it will actually lead us to the train that's below the facility for us to get our escape route on. Yep, so we got ourselves five minutes to get out of here. And the only way we're going to get out of here is we're going to need to get access through that, uh, this, the platform. The rideable platform to get us down to the basement. But it's going to take us some time for that to come down. But we got bigger fish to worry about. And by bigger fish? Oh, William, you're back, aren't you? Ooh, bad. That's... That was quite an attack you put on us, but not enough to actually uh, do us any harm. But, yep, it's going to transform into a bit of a new form. It seems like William constantly gets powerful with every form that he induces. That's a very grotesque form. And just looking at that form, it kind of reminds me of Ruby Weapon a little bit from Final Fantasy VII. Come on, get down here and fight me, mono e mono. There, G. You know, you can jump down. Ooh, bad. Get out of here. Uh, okay, so we're getting hurt. Yep, that, that weapon was pretty much our one-way ticket to actually do damage to this thing. And that was pretty easy to take it down like that. Although it seemed too easy. If anything, I was kind of expecting more of a grotesque final form for this beast. 
But it's time for us to mosey on out of here. All right. Make our way towards the end here. And there's the train. And now, with everything set in stone here, we finally completed Leon's uh, Scenario A campaign. Watch out, Claire. Come on, Leon. Jump in, man. You only got one chance. There you go. And yep, that was uh, Leon's A campaign. That was quite the campaign too, if I do say so myself. That was uh, a lot of fun. And definitely playing it again for you all. Well, I wouldn't say for you all, but that was definitely a lot of fun playing it again for myself. But for me playing it for the first time for each and every one of you. I will say that uh, hopefully... Uh, that the Resident Evil 2 remake that's coming out in January that actually performs really well for a lot of people's expectations, but it's just all a matter of time of, you know, it, or it's just a matter of determining whether or not that game will actually manage to do well when it releases, which I am very, uh, very certain that the game is actually going to be making critical acclaim status when it comes out, but, uh, but I just hope that you know, Capcom sees it as a really good uh, direction for it to actually be a, uh, you know, be very well, uh, like, be a step in the right direction if they want to revert back to the whole third-person aesthetics for a survival horror game. Now, granted, if they decide to do Resident Evil 8 after the Resident Evil 2 remake, which probably they are going to, I would say that they're probably going to return to the whole first-person aesthetic as they did with Resident Evil 7. But, you know, if I mean, if Capcom is going by the whole thing where they say that they're treating Resident Evil 2 Remake as a new game in the series, like it's a new game in the series, then if they are going to, you know, taking that direction for a Resident Evil 8, then I wouldn't mind. But it's kind of hard to say how that's going to go down overall. But yeah, Resident Evil 2. It is still my favorite game in the in the uh, in the entire uh, in the original uh, series. There's Ina Fune's name. Yes, he did have a promotional producer role for this game, and directed by Hideki Kamiya. Yep, like I said, this is the game that pretty much put Hideki Kamiya on the spot. And I'd say without his involvement, we probably wouldn't have had a better slew of Resident Evil games. And we probably wouldn't have gotten other games from him like Devil May Cry, Beautiful Joe, Okami, and even Bayonetta or The Wonderful 101. But, yeah. His genius work with what he did for Resident Evil 2 pretty much helped set the Resident Evil series on the right track for one way or the other when it comes to its overall storyline. There's a picture of Leon right there. And uh, we did get an A ranking out of that, and we managed to complete that in 2 hours and 33 minutes. Wow, I didn't even know we got an A ranking for doing that. But yeah. Now that's awesome. And whenever we start a new game, as, uh, you know, either Leon or Claire, uh, in the, uh, whole B scenario, then we actually do get access to the, uh, to either, I mean, to the rocket launcher. 
the infinite rocket launcher, but then again, we already beat uh, Leon and Claire's A and B, I mean, A scenario. Uh, or at least I did. But uh, it didn't really tell me anything about like an infinite uh, rocket launcher or whatnot, but uh, I assume that I got it. If I didn't, then this game, <laughs> then I'll be like, this game's tripping, and it didn't really give me what I needed. But, uh, yes, that is Resident Evil 2 in a nutshell, at least for Leon A's campaign. And I probably will be returning at some point to actually do uh, Claire's A campaign, and then Leon's B campaign, and then Claire B's campaign. Or Claire's B campaign. But we're not going to be going through any more of the campaigns for tonight, as uh, we're pretty much just going to end off things right here. So, I hope you all really enjoyed this live stream of me going through the entirety of Leon's A campaign in Resident Evil 2. And if you like what you see, then be sure to hit that follow button right above the video player, so that way you're notified of whenever I go live with my live streams. And you can also find, uh, if you like me as a content creator on YouTube, follow me on youtube.com slash reviews. And you can follow me on my Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash reviews reviews and my twitter page at twitter.com slash double rpg reviews and be sure to follow 16-bit jeff and fighter chaos as well as our uh, collab group the geek fighters at uh, twitch.tv slash 16-bit jeff twitch.tv slash fighter chaos and twitch.tv slash the geek fighters i will put all those links in the description and if you want to get access to join our discord server then all you need to do is scroll down below the video player and you'll actually see the tab for our discord server amongst the uh, many tabs that you actually see below the, this video player and it also has the tabs of the other locations that i mentioned to you to also join me or to also get access to that I told you where you need to go if you need to follow me on social media or on YouTube. But definitely be sure to check those out and be sure to follow me and as well as my friends and our collab channel on there if you can. All right, guys, I need to go uh, I need to go ahead and get off here for the night as I do need to go to work tomorrow, but uh, I will be back tomorrow night and we will be resuming Trails of Cold Steel 2 and hopefully we will be able to finish up where we are in uh, Berea Hard so that way we can get Usus to join our cause to have the entirety of Class 7 reunited. So anyway, guys, I just want to end off by saying you all have yourselves a very good morning a great afternoon, or even a pleasant evening. But for the most part, you have yourselves a very fantastic day. This is Double RPG signing off by saying Godspeed and Game On Gamers. Peace out, and good night. Mm -hmm.